kiddos, welcome back. And we're going to continue our discussion of equilibrium. Now, last time we learned how to write what's called an equilibrium expression. And we said we can calculate something called the equilibrium constant. Now, for a given reaction at a given temperature, that constant will always be the same, regardless of the initial concentrations of reactants or products. That's why we call it, after all, a constant. Now, to test this, I have three experiments involving the exact same reaction carried out at the exact same temperature. And we will measure the equilibrium concentrations and place them into an equilibrium expression and calculate the value of KEQ. So the reaction involves hydrogen and iodine gas reacting to form hydrogen iodide. So in the first experiment, I have one mole per liter of hydrogen and two moles per liter of iodine in my reaction vessel. I don't have any HI initially. Now, after that comes to equilibrium, I measure those concentrations again. And I find the concentration of H2, I2, and HI. Then I use my equilibrium expression. Remember, products over reactants and the exponents in the balanced equation, uh, excuse me, yeah, the coefficients in the balanced equation become the exponents in the equilibrium expression. So I can plug these numbers into my equilibrium expression, and I can calculate the value of KEQ. It turns out to be 49.70. Well, that calculated value, that shouldn't change. That constant should not change regardless of the initial concentrations of reactants and products. So in the second experiment, I don't have any H2 or I2 in my reaction vessel initially, but I do have 5 moles per liter of HI. Now when that reaction reaches equilibrium, I measure the amount of H2, I2, and HI, and place those values in my expression, and I get 49.70 again. And in the third experiment, I change the concentrations one more time. I have one mole per liter of each reactant and product. At equilibrium, I measure their concentrations, place them in the expression, and sure enough, I get 49.70. Turns out, regardless of the initial concentrations of reactants or products, when equilibrium is established, we will always end up with that same ratio for that reaction, so long as I don't mess with the temperature. Okay? Here, let's try this one. Let's use the same reaction, but let's do a different temperature. So we're going to expect the equilibrium constant to change. And in this reaction, I have one mole of hydrogen and one mole of iodine gases placed in a one liter rigid container. I can find the molarity of those, can't I? Yeah, molarity is moles divided by liters, so I have one mole per liter of both those reactants. Now, I allow this reaction to come to equilibrium, and I measure the concentration of those reactants again and I find I only have 0.2 moles left. So obviously some of it reacted. It reacted to turn into HI. Boom. Now what I want to do with this information is find the KEQ at this new temperature. So let me show you how I like to do these problems. I like to write the reaction over again, and I create something called an icebox diagram. Now icebox diagrams, of course, have the letters I, C, and E in them. I put brackets around each one. Those brackets are shorthand for chemists to know that we're measuring those uh, values in moles per liter. They're molar concentrations. Now, I stands for the initial molar concentration. So, I have one mole of H2 and one mole of I2 in a one liter container. So, aren't there initial molar concentrations 1.00 molar. And I don't have any HI initially. Now I did give you the equilibrium amounts of H2 and I2. 0.2 moles in that same one liter container. So aren't the equilibrium amounts of H2 0.20 molar and I2 0.20 molar? Hmm. I wonder what the equilibrium amount of HI was. Well, that takes us to the C. 
The C is how much the concentration changed during the reaction. And that's pretty easy to figure out. If I started with one mole per liter and ended up with 0.2 moles per liter, didn't the H2 go down by 0.80 moles per liter? And of course the same is true for the I2. That would make sense because it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. Whatever happened to H2, we would expect to happen to I2. Well, how much HI did or how much did the HI concentration change by? Yeah, that's a 1 to 2 mole ratio. So for every H2 or I2 that goes down, I will create two HIs. So the HI concentration went up by 1.60 molar. Now if I started with 0 and it went up by 1.60, don't I have 1.60 molar at equilibrium? Now this is the row I'm interested in for my equilibrium expressions. I want the equilibrium concentrations. So we can write the equilibrium expression again. KEQ equals HI concentration squared over H2 concentration and I2 concentrations at equilibrium. So let's plug some values in. The HI concentration at equilibrium was 1.60 moles per liter. I'll square that. The H2 at equilibrium was 0 0.20 moles per liter, and the I2 was 0 0.20 moles per liter. So let's see what our equilibrium constant is. So we'll pull out our calculators, 1.6 carat key squared, and we're going to divide that by 0.2, and we're going to divide it by 0.2 again, aren't we? And I get an equilibrium constant of 64 at this new temperature. Did you all see how I did that? All right, we'll have one or two of those on your next assignment. Let's take a look at another problem. Um, let's change up the reaction a bit. Let's do CO and 2H2s to create uh, methanol, CH3OH. Now this time I'm going to give you the equilibrium constant. And what I want to do are three different problems. I'm going to give you the molar concentrations um, at equilibrium of... Um, the reactants and products, but I'm, I'm going to leave one off. And it's our job to calculate the value of the one I leave off. So to start these, let's start by writing the equilibrium expression. KEQ equals CH3OH, remember products go on top, kiddos, divided by CO concentration and H2 concentration squared. Reactants go on the bottom and the coefficients in the balanced equation, remember, become the exponents in the expression. Now, I know the value of KEQ. I know that that equals 10.5. So, let's take a look at letter A. I want to find the CO concentration in an equilibrium mixture that has an equilibrium concentration of H2 of 0.933 and methanol of 1.32 moles per liter. So I want to solve this expression here, kiddos, for CO. So I want to bring CO over to the left side. So CO concentration equals what? Well, if I bring CO over to the left-hand side, I'll multiply both sides by it. And I want to get rid of KEQ, so I'll divide both sides by it. So hopefully I'm doing my math correctly. The CO concentration would be the CH3OH concentration at equilibrium over the KEQ, and the H2 concentration at equilibrium squared. Okay? Check my math. Make sure I did that right. Now we can plug in our numerical values. The CH3OH concentration at equilibrium is 1.32 moles per liter. My KEQ is 10.5 and my H2 concentration is 0.933 moles per liter, and we're going to square that. So let's use our calculators to find the missing value. Uh, 1.32 divided by 10.5 divided by, I'm going to use my parentheses key here, 0.933 carat key 2. All right, and I end up with, uh, looks like I have three sig figs here, 
for molar. Okay? Now, how can we check that answer to make sure it's correct? Well, we should be able to place our equilibrium concentrations back into our expression, and when we solve for them, we should be able to get the equilibrium constant of 10.5. So let's give that a whirl. Let's change colors here to one of our favorites, pink, and let's see. The CH3OH we said was 1.32. The CO we have is 0.144 kiddos, right? That's our calculated value. And the H2 was 0.933, and we're going to square that. Now, if everything worked out well, we should get 10.5. So let's see. 1.32 divided by 0.144 divided by, my parentheses key, 0.933 carat key squared. And I end up with... Sure enough, 10.5. Okay, just a way to check your work, I would recommend that. Okay? All right, so that was letter A, folks. Why don't you take a second and do letter B without my help? I want you to find the H2 concentration right here when the CO concentration at equilibrium is 1.09 and the methanol concentration is 0.325. So pause the video and give it a whirl. Okay, welcome back. It looks like to do letter B, if we want to solve for the H2 concentration, we'll solve for the H2 squared. We're going to bring that over to the left-hand side, kiddos. And we would have that equal to the CH3OH concentration divided by our KEQ, and then divided by the CO, if I did my math right. Now, to solve for just the H2 concentration, of course, at the end, we'll have to square root both sides, won't we? Alrighty, so let's see what we end up with. The H2 concentration would be the square root of CH3OH. Um, that would be 0.325 moles per liter and the KEQ, which is 10.5, and the CO, which is 1.09. All right, so let's see what that turns out to be. Um, let's press second square root, and my parenthesis key shows up right away, and I'll go 0.325 divided by 10.5, and divide that by 1.09, close off our parentheses, and I end up with 0.169 moles per liter. Okay, should we check that to make sure that it worked? Let's check it. Let's do that. So let's see. Um, I should end up with 10.5 with these concentrations. So the CH3OH was 0.325, right? The CO was 1.09, and the H2 is 0.169, and we're going to square that. So if we did it right, we should end up with 10.5 again. So let's give it a whirl. 0.325 divided by 1.09 divided by, I'm going to use my parentheses key, 0.169 carat key squared, close parentheses, and I end up with, well, 10.4. Now remember, we did some rounding there, and we can be off in that last digit. Yeah, I feel confident with the 0.169 as my answer. All right, why don't you do letter C, come back to the video, and see how you did. All right, welcome. So this time, we want to solve for the methanol concentration at equilibrium. And so if we're going to solve for the methanol concentration, looks like we want to bring the CO and the H2 squared over to the left-hand side and multiply by it. So that would be our KEQ, right, times the CO concentration and the H2 concentration squared. So I'm just doing some simple basic algebra here. Hopefully you're following the math. If not, ooh, we're sort of kind of in trouble. All right, my KEQ... 10.5, right? My CO concentration is 3.85. 
and my H2 concentration 0 0.0661. Remember that's squared. All right, so let's see what we end up with for our methanol concentration at that equilibrium situation. 10.5 times 3.85 times parentheses 0 0.0661 caret key 2 close parentheses. I end up with 0.177 moles per liter of methanol at that equilibrium situation. Okay, you can go ahead and plug these numbers into your expression to check it to make sure you did it right. If you did, you should end up with a K value of 10.5. Alrighty, we're going to do a few more examples in the next video. Stay with me. See you soon. Bye-bye.